Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you some hydrangeas. I love painting hydrangeas because I love hydrangeas uh, and uh, this one is uh, from uh, my mom's garden uh, in France and it's a really really pretty and very natural looking hydrangeas. A few months ago, uh, I paint uh, another hydrangea uh, which was coming from the florist uh, and uh, it was uh, with a sizzle. And if you want to look at this video, if you haven't seen it uh, yet, uh, I will put the link in the description below. I'm starting this painting uh, in a very, very uncommon way uh, because uh, I don't know if you can notice it, but uh, this is not uh, watercolor at first. Uh, this is some acrylic uh, ink uh, that I'm using right now uh, for the background of this painting. As I wanted to have a really, really dark background for, for this painting in order that uh, the flower could pop uh, a little bit more because they will be very light uh, on top of this dark uh, uh, background. Uh, I decided to, to use the same technique that I used for the sunflower uh, a few videos ago. Uh, so I'm adding at first uh, acrylic ink on my paper in order to have dark colors that will not budge at all uh, once it's uh, dry because it's acrylic. And I'm not very uh, used to uh, use uh, acrylic. Uh, I rather prefer uh, using watercolor, uh, of course, uh, because acrylic can be very, very messy and make some stains on uh, every surface it touches. So I'm not a big fan of acrylic in general. Uh, but in this case, it's quite uh, nice to use acrylic uh, just because uh, what I'm doing right now will not budge, will not move, will not blur at all. Uh, it will not be reactivated uh, when I paint uh, watercolor on top of it. And that's exactly what I want here. Once I'm uh, okay with what I'm uh, painting for this first layer, I will let it dry uh, completely before adding watercolor. So I've started my painting with a drawing at first and then uh, acrylic and this will not budge at all. So now I can add uh, watercolor as if I was coloring this painting in some way. Uh, so it's really, really easy uh, because I, was, um, I needed to concentrate a lot uh, for my drawing and for appli applying the, the acrylic. But right now I can be really uh, more free uh, in my painting just because uh, the, the big job of uh, making the shape is already done. And I can paint over uh, the acrylic just because uh, watercolor is transparent. So I can use the acrylic background to transform my colors and everything will be very smooth. Uh, the color will uh, work very well together. Uh, and it's quite easy to work uh, in that way, I, I feel. I'm using Rose Mother Lake for the color of the flower and it's a very, very transparent color. So uh, it's work really beautifully with the acrylic background uh, on this painting. Once my base color is done, I will let it dry before adding any details. And uh, while it's drying, I will talk you through my supplies. For the brushes, I'm using Escoda Ultimo 1 inch flat and an Escoda Ultimo number no. 8 rigger and a silver brush black velvet one quarter inch in a dagger shape. For the colors, I'm using Indian Trend Blue, Amazonite Genuine, Nickel Azo Yellow, Rose Mother Lake, and Lavender. And for the acrylic inks, I'm using uh, one from Golden in Indigo and the color uh, crimson, yellow ochre. And for a little bit of texture, I'm using uh, my medium of uh, granulation. And my paper today is from Archie's in Hot Pressed. So now the background is done. Uh, the shapes of color is done. 
and I just have to add uh, some details in the flower so that you are able to recognize them uh, very easily. Hydrangea is formed by two types of flowers. Some are uh, fertile and some are sterile. And the sterile uh, one are the bigger one you can see on my paper right now. They are uh, big with four uh, petals and uh, it's a really, really pretty flower. But the fertile one are the tiny, tiny uh, little ones that are in the middle. Uh, and that's the texture I want to work on because it's a really uh, particular texture. And in order to paint them, I'm using uh, some shades of violet by mixing Indonesian Blue and Rose Mother Lake together. Uh, darker uh, when it's uh, close to the stem and uh, really, really light and magenta uh, on the top of the flower. And I'm using a dry brush to make all the tiny uh, little details uh, because it's an, an easy way uh, to make all those tiny marks uh, and create texture of uh, these uh, flowers. And for the sterile flowers that are the bigger one, uh, I just need to add some details to uh, shape uh, the, the petal a little bit better. And uh, I have to detail also the center of the flower, which is quite particular with a uh, shade uh, right at this uh, point that is very, very uh, specific to this uh, flower. And I'm jumping from uh, the sterile flower to the fertile flower to the sterile flower to the fertile flower just because uh, that way uh, it has time to dry and I can add uh, another layer of colors uh, and uh, some other details in, uh, without uh, making uh, some mistake uh, with the layer, layer underneath it. And for all the fertile flower, I will add also dots uh, with my, the point of my brush. Uh, but also I will make some projection because uh, when you place dots with your brush, it could be a, a bit too regular. Uh, and, but instead, if you are using projection, it's a little bit more random and a little bit more natural. And that's exactly what I want uh, for this uh, part of the flower. For all the petals that are in the shade, I'm using the lavender color uh, to, to make the shade appear on the petal, uh, just because it's a, a slightly opaque uh, watercolor and it blends really beautifully with uh, the acrylic behind it because um, as it's not as transparent as uh, my other watercolor, it adds a little bit uh, of smoothness uh, in this area and I like it a, a lot um, and I think that's a good thing to, to use transparent watercolor and also opaque watercolor in this kind of painting because you are able to uh, maybe correct a little bit uh, the acrylic shape or smooth uh, the acrylic shape uh, that way. For the center of my flower with all the fertile uh, flower on it, you can see now that there is a beautiful gradient from very, very dark uh, violet to very, very light pink. And I made that by layering uh, some uh, dry brush marks, some uh, dots of colors uh, and some projection. I mix uh, all these techniques together in order to get uh, this gradient and uh, it still look very, very natural uh, because there is a lot of randomness into it. The only thing I want to do uh, with this painting right now is to correct a little bit uh, this edge of uh, acrylic that you can see really, really uh, firmly on my paper. I just want to um, rag it a little bit so, so that it's not as uh, a, a straight line uh, in, in this area. Uh, so I'm adding the same uh, color uh, or I try to for it to be the same as my background by mixing Indian Twin Blue and Rose Mother Lake uh, and some palette dirt uh, <laughs> that I have on my palette uh, in order to uh, make the color a little bit uh, more uh, natural. And I'm just dotting this area with a, a lot of tiny dots of uh, violet uh, 
so that uh, I can blur uh, this edge a little bit. And then I will soften uh, the uh, edge of color into the background so that you cannot see uh, really a difference uh, between my dots of watercolor and uh, the acrylic background. I really liked to uh, to paint uh, this uh, hydrangea with this first layer of acrylic. It's a little bit difficult to paint with acrylic. Uh, I was thinking that it was the same uh, as watercolor, but uh, the pigments are not moving in the same way on my paper, and I was a little bit um, baffled by, by that at first. And I will need uh, to uh, work a little bit on that uh, in future painting so that I am able to um, just control a little bit more the effect uh, but in overall it's a really really nice painting and I like it a lot and this video is now ending thanks for watching and I hope you like it please check the blog post for more information about it and tell me what you think in the comments see you soon